Greetings and welcome to a new video about Power Electronics. In this example, we will discuss the buck converter design. We have discussed in the previous examples about the analysis of this buck converter circuit. So we have calculated the output current, output voltage, and also the ripple currents. In this case, we will use that data to determine the component values for the inductor, the capacitor, and also the resistor. And we will do that step by step in our calculations to get this graph and also this circuit completely in our calculation also verify this in MATLAB Simulink simulations. Okay, again we have this circuit, the buck converter generic circuit with the VS here as the input DC voltage source and the components here. The design objective is the following, we need to design this buck converter circuit such that the output voltage is 15 volts, output current is 2 amps, and we need to use a DC input voltage of 60 volts. And the maximum percentage peak peak output ripple voltage is 0.01, .01 so 1%. That means the following the ripple voltage at the output must be only 1% of the output voltage itself. So that means 1% of 15 volts is 0.15 volts or 150 millivolts. Okay, now this is again the waveform we have discussed in the previous examples. We consider or assume that this will be in the conduction, uh, continuous conduction mode, so CCM. And for that, the waveforms are shown here and we have discussed this in great detail last time. So this is just for completeness here. Let's now look at the calculations in the solutions first. First, we start with the duty cycle. For our buck converter, we need a du specific duty cycle in order to go from 60 volts at the input to the 15 volts at the output. And that is this very simple formula. So VO over VS, so 15 over 60, that will give us 0.25 or 25%. The next step is you need to select the switching frequency for this switch. It can be anything actually, uh, which is convenient also for our components. So in this case, I have selected a switching frequency of 100 kilohertz. So any other value will do. In most cases, if you take around this value, that will be fine. Now that is selected as said. Now we have the following step, which is the peak peak inductor current. Now that is given by delta IL. And again, this is a value you need to select. So that is in this case, 20% of the output current. So 20% of the output current will be the ripple inductor current. So in this case, 20% of 2 amps will be 0.4 amps. So we consider a 0.4 amp peak peak inductor current. You can take also 0.3 times or 0.1 times, but depending on, again, the requirements and also how precise you want to have your converter. The inductor itself. Now the value of the inductor, that's given by this expression. You see here the output voltage, the duty cycle, the switching frequency, and also the peak peak inductor current we have just determined. When you now substitute the values in here, you get here 281 microhenries. And this is the minimum inductor we want to have in this circuit in order to stay in the continuous current mode. Now, you can also say I want to have some safety margin, so let's select something which is a little bit larger. So in this case, I have selected as 300 microhenries. Okay, now we need to recalculate our new peak peak inductor current because this peak peak inductor current was used here. And again, we need to calculate now again the new inductor uh, peak peak current to use it for this new uh, L of 300 microhenries. So you just rewrite this expression. So you place the L here in the denominator and the delta IL will go here and that will be just this expression using 300 micro Henry's here that will give us 0 0.375 amps. So 375 milliamps instead of 400 milliamps now. Okay, now the maximum inductor current is given by this expression. You see here the average uh, inductor current plus the peak peak inductor current over two. Now, since the average inductor current that's actually shown here is equal to the load current, which is our average load current, so that will be also 2 amps. So 2 amps plus this will give you 2.188 amps. That will be the maximum inductor current. Now, minimum inductor current in a similar fashion. In this case, we have a minus sign here. 
Again, 2 minus this, you get now 1.813 amps. Okay. Now, this is larger than zero, as said before, in order to, to stay in the continuous conduction mode or continuous current mode. The L minim, IL minimum, so the minimum inductive current must be larger than zero or exactly equal to zero. So we have here the condition met, so we'd say it is done in continuous current mode. The RMS inductor current is also important to also have a rated current for your inductor. Now this is then calculated using this for this triangle. You can work it out as integral and you get this expression. You see here again the average inductor current and also the peak peak inductor current over 2 divided by the square root of 3 quantity squared and also this squared so if you do substitute the value you get here 2.003 amps so almost 2 amps for the RMS inductor current now next one is the capacitor the capacitor is given by this expression the value you see again the duty cycle the inductor itself and also now the ratio of the ripple that is really determining the value of the capacitor and also here the switch and frequency squared so when you now substitute here the value and also RL, which we have selected, 300 microhenries, you get 3.125 microfarads. Now, in, in this case, I just select this, and this will be also our minimum capacitor we need. So I select also exactly as we have calculated, so I don't take it a little bit higher, just, just what it is. Now, the maximum allowed equivalent series resistor for the capacitor is important that will also determine our maximum allowed ripple so this is then our delta vo which is our peak peak output uh, voltage ripple that will be then 0 0.01 times the output voltage again as said that will be then 0 0.15 volts now that's also related approximately to that rc small letter rc which is our equivalent series resistor of the capacitor times the capacitor peak peak current which is also the inductor peak peak current you can also see that from the skirt because this peak peak value or this waveform here in pink is just shifted down compared to this blue line by this io so they have exact same peak peak value so we can say we can just take that and then rewrite this such that we have this esr of the capacitor then we will get 0 0.15 over the peak peak inductor current that will give us 0 0.4 ohm so the the capacitor we have we will select in this case this value will have a maximum allowed rc so esr of 0 0.4 ohms so the smaller the better okay the rms capacitor current is also calculated using this formula in similar form because we see that it has also the similar uh, triangle shape in this case we don't have the average Collect, uh, capacitor current so that will be then just zero so only what you have is this so you can just calculate this you get now here 108.3 milliamps okay the final one is our load resistor or our resistor here r that is really determined by the given output voltage and the output current and this is then 15 over 2 will be then 7.5 ohm and this is now the minimum allowed load resistor so if you go down you will then we require more current to sustain this 15 volts so that's not allowed so we need to go to 7.5 7 ohms or higher okay now let's bring all the values we have determined here and also what we have selected so this is the summary of all the results let's now look at the simulink circuit this is now the circuit in simulink you see here the switch dc input voltage source diode and we have also the inductor here capacitor and the resistor we also have measurements for the, vo the voltage across the inductor voltage across the resistor which is our output voltage the current here in the branch which is our output current current in the capacitor and current in the inductor branch we also calculate the or uh, determine the rms value of the inductor current and also the capacitor current that was also determined here in the previous slide now you see here one by one, which is the RMS capacitor current is 0 0.108 amps, so very close to what we have, that is fine. And the inductor RMS current is 2.009 amps, so that is also very close to what we have calculated, so this is nice and checked. The next one is about the steady state value for our output 
voltage and also output current. Now the output current is given in yellow. This is also labeled by one, label one. And the load voltage or output voltage is given by this light blue uh, color. And I have now two labels. Label one gives you the value of the load current or output current. And that is given all here. And now that is really then 2.001 amps. We require two amps, so nice, we're very close to what we wanted. And the load voltage or the output voltage is 15.04 volts, also very close to the 15 volts what we required. So this is fine. Let's now go to the next slide, which is about the peak peak inductor current. So in order to do that, we need to zoom in in the figures and the plots. Now this is the red one, which is our inductor current. You see here the peak and the minimum, minimum and maximum and the minimum value. That's also shown here. So we see here the values here in this uh, table. And that is then given here in, in larger view. So you see actually the maximum and the minimum value. And the peak peak value here is 0 0.3737 amps. So very close to the 0 0.375 amps. So that's also nice to see. Next one is about the peak peak inductor voltage, which is this green. Uh, plot or green graph you see the maximum and the minimum so how do we calculate that the maximum inductor voltage is the vs minus vo so it is then 16 minus 15 is 45 that's really Kirchhoff's voltage though because the voltage here vs will be then across the inductor plus the voltage across the load so again you're rewriting this such that you have the inductor voltage is this one that is when the switch is closed and when the switch is open then you have vl minimum is minus vo that will be this minus 15 volts because that polarity here is reverse of the polarity of the output and if i look at the label one and label two i see actually here in the table that this is 45.04 volts so very close to what we have here calculated and here it is minus 15.1 volts so also very close to this minus 15 volts we have calculated so this is also checked. Next one is our peak peak load voltage. That's about the ripple. It must stay below 0 0.15 or it must be uh, max 0 0.15. That's actually this light blue. You see here also again in the table, the values, and this is now given here in larger view. So the VO maximum is 15.11 volts and the VO minimum. So VO maximum is 15.11 volts and VO minimum is 15.96 volts and the peak peak value here is 0 0.14898 volt, volts uh, volt. so that's actually um, almost let's say 150 millivolts so that's actually as we wanted so that's actually a little bit smaller so that is perfectly fine okay the next one is the peak peak load current that is actually similar in this case we look at this yellow line you see here the peak peak value and also the table here and that will be then maximum of 2.014 amps and 1.994 amps so you see actually these two values are very close to each other and the peak peak value here is almost 20 milliamps so that is also very small ripple in the output current okay the final one is about the pack capacitor current you see here the capacitor current in pink the maximum and the minimum again in the table here and again showing that here will be then this is then 0 0.1934 amps maximum capacitor current and minimum capacitor current is minus 0 0.1791 amps so you see it is not symmetric perfectly because we have assumed it was symmetric so the average was then zero for the capacitor current which is not the case now that is in the peak peak form here 0 0.3725 amps which is very close to the peak peak value of the inductor current so that's also again verified here all right we have now checked all the values for our design we have achieved our 15 volts at the output and also the two amps as the output current we also stayed below the maximum allowed 0.01 or 1 percent peak peak output ripple if you have any questions about this buck converter design in open loop Please let me know and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. See you next time in another video. Take care.